Hey guys, it's Emma. And after several math assignments, two math quizzes, one math test, and a couple sociology assignments later, I am back today for you with another video. Um, this is the start of my reading vlog for the trick or treat a thon that is going on. Um, I apologize for any background noise, it is currently pouring where I live. Um, what I also am going to apologize for in advance is, you know, the raccoon eyes and the eye bags. As of the day that I am filming this, this is October 7th, the readathon started seven days ago. Because of homework and all, just, just like the sheer amount of work that I've had to do for school, I, you know, wasn't able to start technically vlogging. However, I am doing that now. This readathon is hosted by Courtney and Megan and I will leave their information down below along with all of the captains for all of the teams. Uh, there are, I want to say, four or five different teams. I am on team Monster. And this is a bingo readathon. The captains gave us a list of prompts and a team specific prompt as well and we were either allowed to go with our pre-made bingo board or we can make one ourselves i made one myself this is the one with the numbers and then um all of the books i have chosen are on right here i'm not going to go through all of them Right now, I'm just going to, you know, talk about them as I read them. As of right now, it is October 7th, I have completed three books. I have completed three prompts already. Uh, number 32, which is Slumber Party, aka A Friend Picks a Book. Um, I have completed number 11, which is Joke, Read Something with Humor. And then I have completed number three, which is Whispers in the Dark, to listen to an audiobook. Um, I'm going to like speedily go through them all. So uh, the one that I read for that my friend picked out was Grown by Tiffany D. Jackson. This book is about Enchanted Jones and she wants to be a, um, a music star and she gets noticed by this extremely famous R&B singer. His name is Corey Fields and she um, engages in many different things with him and uh, becomes embroiled in the dark side of the music industry and the resulting um, pedophilia that unfortunately runs amok through that industry as well. I gave it four stars. I absolutely loved it. Um, I will have a review up for this very soon. For um, Joke, we already kind of messed up. <laughs> We kind of messed up uh, because the book that I read for this one was Sharp Teeth by Toby Barlow. This is about lycanthropes and they are here in modern day LA and um, you know they are living their lives or trying to. I gave this five stars. This was a good werewolf book. I loved this werewolf book, okay? This is, it, it reminded me so much of the Wolfen. It's like written I don't want to say verse. <laughs> um, all I know is that this book, the lines don't reach the end of the page. And the reason why I say that I kind of messed up on it is because this was like to be uh, read for the prompt of joke, aka to read a book with humor. Um, this wasn't necessarily a humorous book. Don't get me wrong, it had like one-liners here and there, but mm. so this maybe was a misstep, but then again, it is what it is. The third book that I've completed, which was for uh, Whispers in the Dark, which was like to read an audiobook that is Come Closer by Sarah Gran. <sighs> I unfortunately did not like this book. Um, I gave it two stars. It's about this woman named Amanda and she works in this architect company and all of a sudden she starts hearing this voice in her head and she's like am I possessed or am I crazy it's just something that I need to accept within myself that I don't particularly like uh, possession stories and this is kind of your typical run-of-the-mill possession story you literally watch as this woman gets possessed and um, the reason why I picked this was because um, on TikTok a while ago I'd seen like this one video where it was like the most disturbing books I've ever read, or something like that. And... <laughs> Spoke. 
yeah, I guess. It just irritates me to my core when they're like, oh, animals don't like me. Animals are growling at me and they're being really aggressive towards me whenever I come along. And then when I leave, they're fine. Mm, it's probably just because I'm a Capricorn rising. No, babe, you're possessed. I did not like this book, um, unfortunately. It was creepy at some points, but overall disturbing. I wouldn't say that at all. So the two that I have left in the row are number 28, which is Dusk, and that's to uh, read something dark or with night in the title, The Child Thief by Brom. I got recommended this book by somebody in Barnes and Noble, and they were like, yeah, if you like Peter Pan, and if you like dark, really dark renditions of classic fairy tales, this is for you. And I was like, sign me the hell up, okay? And so far, I'm on page, uh, like, 103 on chapter 8. Dude, this book is terrifying, okay? If you like The Call by Patter O'Gillen, then I guarantee you, you'll like this book. So this book, I'm loving it so far. I'm absolutely adoring it. And then the last one that I'm going to read is for prompt number 19, which is blood. And that is to read a book with blood on the cover or in the title or read a book with vampires in it. And I am planning on reading A Dowry of Blood. Um, I don't remember who the author is, but I have heard great things from this, not to mention it centers on Dracula's brides. So the rules for this readathon are, you know, you have to get a bingo or just get as many points as you can for your team. At the very end of the vlog, we're gonna count um, how many pages each book that I completed has, and then we're gonna tally them up, and then we're going to guesstimate, because math is not my best subject, I'm telling y'all right now, um, just how many points I got, because the point system is um, based off of um, a page count. And yeah, I think that's about it. Um, I will talk to you whenever I, whenever I have an update. And now enjoy just a little bit of me cleaning my bathroom. I need to clean my shower because the floor is looking a little bit crusty dusty. And then I also need to clean my sink, which you are sitting on top of. That pink mold in there, <clears throat> that bitch gonna die. Hello, it is six o'clock um, uh, into the next day. And my friend and I, we deep cleaned our apartment from top to bottom and now it just feels refreshed. I repainted my nails because let's just say bleach, pine saw, Lysol wipes, Comet, they don't necessarily mix well with nail polish. 35% of the way through A Dowry of Blood. It's giving me the exact same energy and like the tension and the atmosphere that Interview with a Vampire gave me when I read it and just wow. It's giving me dark and just edgy vampires and like bloody and sexy and we love it. Okay, we endorse. Um, the lady who's narrating it because I'm listening to it on audiobook, the lady that narrates it is narrating it like the rent is due. I think we're also getting um, some bisexual rep because Constanza, she is uh, the main character and she's Dracula's first bride. And now we've met, I think, what's going to be his second bride, a woman named Magdalena and Homegirl Constanza is like, mm, am I jealous or am I just sexually frustrated because this woman is hot? Maybe some bisexual rep, maybe some pansexual rep, I don't know, but it's giving me very much Lestat and Louis, and we're here for it. Hello, it is now the next day, and I have finished A Dowry of Blood by S.T. Gibson. I gave it two stars. 
uh, I liked it, but not as much as I thought I would, unfortunately. Um, it was a cool vampire story. I liked how, you know, just vampiric it was. However, there were some things that just didn't hit the mark for me and just flat out gave me the ick. The ending was really rushed to me. Kind of like, you know, we may have forgotten what the ending was going to be. Constance is like hundreds of years old by the time they meet Alexi. And, um, well, when she meets Alexi, she has kind of this, at least what came off to me as a mothering air towards Alexi. And, you know, I was like, okay, you know, that makes sense. Until she and Alexi have sex. It's kind of seen as like this, release of pent-up sexual tension and it's like this seems a little groomy to me nevertheless that crosses um i believe it's number 19 prompt 19 blood off the list so we are right in the middle now we just have to finish the child thief what i have started to do however is um go across this way so after i finished a dowry of blood I then started Things Have Gotten Worse Since We Last Spoke. I don't really know what this one is about. The synopsis says, you know, these two women are having like email, an email conversation and like it spirals out of control or something like that. And like at the beginning of the book, it's talking about how, you know, like some things have been omitted due to like this fictional police department. And I'm like, ooh, one of these bitches is dead. So I'm really excited about this book. Um, it was also on the list of like the most disturbing books I've read that I saw on TikTok that I saw um, uh, come closer on, so a little bit iffy. However, I do have high hopes for this. Uh, I also need to uh, finish a paper that I have to write for my composition class by five. I'm probably gonna do my paper first and then I'm gonna try and fit some reading in there and then I have some Spanish homework that I need to finish as well. So that is my day. Um, I will update y'all at the very end of it and see where we are. So it is about 1.30 in the morning and uh, your girl has gotten to about almost page 200. Like the world that Brahm has made for Peter Pan is so good. Um, and like, I think we're taking a little bit of inspiration from like the Celtic Pantheon, which is freaking cool, okay? The pace is picked up and we're here for it. And then I've gotten farther into things have gotten worse since we last spoke. Um, I want to say I'm a little bit over halfway through now because it's, it's a relatively short book. Um, things have escalated. And it's kind of like, like, um, these two, uh, basically Agnes and Zoe have entered into kind of like a slave master type BDSM, I think, relationship. Um, only let's just say the tasks that Zoe wants Agnes to do have like escalated by a lot. So I'm probably gonna read a little bit more tonight. Um, you never know, I might actually finish it. But either way, when I wake up, I will um, update you guys and let you know what happened. A few moments later. I have gotten four pages farther. And <laughs> I don't even know what to say. Like, like, and I'm not disturbed yet. I'm just like, what is, like, what is going on? <laughs> Zoe commanded Agnes to kill a salamander. Because apparently the salamander is like a symbol of rebirth. Okay. But um, Agnes does it. I don't even know how to compute what could possibly be going through Agnes's head right now. I mean, it's like, oh yay, I killed the salamander so that I can have sex with this complete stranger that I met online. Why? Because she told me to. Um, it's about, I want to say, 4.38. I just got finished 
filming my review for Grown, so that'll be up before this is up. Um, and if you are watching this from that review, hi, how are you? Whenever I last updated you guys, um, a little bit afterwards, uh, I finished Things Have Gotten Worse Since We Last Spoke. I gave it three stars. It did get a little bit better, but still not disturbing, you know? I mean, like, yeah, I guess it was a little squeamish, right? But it wasn't disturbing. That finishes prompt number four, which is Campfire Stories, which was to read a book under 200 pages. Um, so yeah, we are now on our way to making it across this way. I finished that book and then I started the second, The Howling, um, because I read the first one, thought it was okay, it was basically the movie, gave it three stars, and then I'm also going to continue reading The Child Thief because I'm almost a little bit halfway through it, and yeah, I'll update you guys if anything interesting happens. It is October the 13th, and your girl last night finished The Child Thief by Brahm, and I... The last, like, third of this book sent me on a whirlwind of emotions. I was just trying to grab on for dear life, for some sort of stability. Like, so many horrible things were just happening one on top of the other. And then something, and then, like, a character died that, yeah, I liked, but, like, I didn't think I was that attached to him. Do you see that crinkled page right there? That's not a bookmark. That's crinkled because those are tear stains. That, that right there, that little crinkle, those are tear stains. Read at your own peril. There's a shit ton of trigger warnings in here. <laughs> like this book is brutal. It is genuinely barbaric. And I think what makes it even more gruesome is the fact that they're kids. Five stars, gorgeous book. Anybody that wants to read this, please do. Cause Anyway, I got bingo. Yay. <laughs> I haven't gotten that much farther in The Howling, maybe like page 97. We're like at the point where Karen's running for her life. Like there's so much stuff that's happened in like 97 pages out of 236. So it could go like one of two ways. It could either be like really stretched out and not good or a lot of stuff could happen that I just don't know and it could end up being great. The Howling 2 book is not the same as the Howling 2 movie so I'm kind of in dark water here which is one of my phobias. Get me out! I am not in the mindset to be doing this right now! <laughs> um, I am about to go with my friend to campus and you know so she can go to class and i'm gonna wait outside and get some reading done i finished the second the howling um by gary brandner and i read it for the prompt of monster mash i realized that i didn't say that earlier and for that i do apologize um and that was to read a book with a monster in it or like just monsters in general in it and i gave it one star i did not like this book one bit. It was boring. It was spaced out. And they're, they're in Mexico at some point in this book. And the Spanish, the Spanish was horrendous to have to read through. Gary, you couldn't get somebody to proofread your damn Spanish? Really? So, hmm. Also, something else that I realized, uh, I did not tell y'all what prompt I read Things Have Gotten Worse Since We Last Spoke For um, by Eric LaRocca. I do apologize for that as well, but I read that for Campfire Stories, which was to read a book under 200 pages. So, um, so far we are now halfway across the top. I would continue on along that way. However, I do not have the two books that are left in that row physically, nor can I find them on audiobook. I will bring two physical books with me to campus, um, and I have started Blindness by Jose Saramago. I don't really know what this one is about, but um, a bunch of my friends, when they took a um, advanced placement uh, language, like language arts or something like that, they, they had to read it, and they told me that it was like disturbing, it was weird, and I was like, sign me up. 
all right? Um, so I'll start that. I have that on my phone. And then the two physical books that I'm bringing with me to campus are Empire of Wild by Sherry Dimeline and Born a Crime by Trevor Noah. I hauled this a little while ago um, and I am hoping that it's a werewolf story, fingers crossed. Um, I just know that there's a woman named Joan whose husband has gone missing. He's been missing for a year and she finds him in an old timey revival tent style setup in a Walmart parking lot. And he doesn't remember her, let alone that he's married to her. So I'm really excited to start reading this. And then Born a Crime by Trevor Noah. I don't have it on my TBR for the readathon. Um, however, I have to read this for school. I'm not gonna get a lot of B-roll just plainly because I don't feel that it's very appropriate to film around campus because uh, I don't know if I'm going to accidentally catch somebody in the lens. and I went to Barnes & Noble today because it is my birthday and I wanted to get a little shopping spree in there because honestly I felt like I deserved a treat for being able to survive 21 years um, today on this earth when honestly I didn't even think I would make it to 18 <laughs> you know just through natural selection in and of itself <laughs> so um, we went to Barnes & Noble and your girl got five books and honestly, I cannot wait to be able to show you guys. In regards to the readathon, um, I am a little bit farther into Empire of Wild. I'm almost halfway through it. I am loving this book, okay? It's a werewolf book, but it's like from the Cajun and Acadian folklore. So it's not called a werewolf, it's called a rogaroo. First of all, Joan, love her. Victor, who's her husband, we get like points of view from him and he's like trapped somewhere. He's running around trying to find out how to get out of this prison he's in. Again, I don't know what type of prison our um, guy is in. However, he like keeps running around for Joan and he's like, like one sentence was something along the lines of Ev um, stitch by stitch, loop over loop, Victor was made for Joan and God I'm seeing what you're doing for others <laughs> oh my gosh so Joan and Victor I'm in love I want to I want to know what the hell is going to happen because like I'm not being able to connect the dots and it's like it, it's in a good way okay so Empire of Wild I'm absolutely loving it in regards to blindness um I haven't gotten into it yet I think I'm on page five out of 400 and something. Um, I'm just not feeling blindness right now. I'm about to go out to dinner with my friends and oh my gosh, I'm just so excited. Today's been so good and I'm 21 now. I can buy wine. Okay, so everybody meet Charlotte. Y'all, um, I hope remember her from uh, the one video where she picked my childhood books. Well, she's back. I finished Empire of Wild by Sherry Demoline. Y'all, this book is magnificent, okay? Um, I love the mixture of cultures in this book. Like it mixes um, uh, indigenous and uh, Bavarian culture. So I gave this five stars and it's a very good werewolf book. It's funny and it's honestly grittier and sexier than I thought it would be. And I was really like surprised and really excited by that. She just writes scariness really well because there are some scenes in this book that were like, no ma'am, <laughs> no ma'am. Like uh, if you're afraid of silhouettes like me, so that finishes prompt number five. 
which is to read a book with like plants or trees on the cover. I started two more books. Uh, one of them is Horns by Joe Hill and I'm reading this for prompt number two, which is to read a book with fall colors on the cover. This is, a, this is about a man named Ignatius Parrish, but everybody calls him Ig. He has been accused for the horrific rape and murder of his girlfriend. And one day he wakes up with horns that give him the power to basically make anybody confess their darkest secrets to him. So he uses this ability to find out who really did commit the rape and murder of his girlfriend. Um, I've seen the movie. I liked the movie. Um, the book, I'm about 42% of the way into it. Um, I'm a little precarious to keep going, just plainly because it's kind of like a similar situation with the second, The Howling. We're only 42% of the way through and we already know who killed the girlfriend. So it's like, how, what's the rest of the book gonna be? The second book that I started is Sour Candy by Keelan Patrick Burke. This is a short one. Um, it's also an ebook. And it's about this guy named Phil, who is a very overindulgent father and everybody thinks so because obviously by the look of Phil, this kid is draining his health. And the thing is, before a certain day, Phil had never seen the kid in his life. So um, as of right now, I am halfway through it. Uh, like I said, it's really short and it's, it's okay, it's creepy, um, but it's not like scary yet. Many unbearable hours later. It is now the next day. And let's just say yesterday, um, as far as reading went, eh, not an enjoyable time. I completed Sour Candy by Keelan Patrick Burke. Um, and I think that was for the prompt of Screams, which was to like read a book that was scary, which, okay. It was just like so surface level. It was really underwhelming. I gave it two stars. These things that are like seven feet tall and they have deer skulls for heads and black cloaks and underneath these black cloaks, they're all tentacles. And I'm like, what in the HP Lovecraft is this? It honestly was the equivalent to watching DC Suicide Squad. All of this in your face and not explained whatsoever. Um, and then I finished Horns by Joe Hill. And, <laughs> oh girl, the utter landslide my emotions took <laughs> while reading this book can only be described as purely cinematic. I gave it one star and I hated this book. I genuinely hated it. The problem is we get the revelation of who killed Marin and then afterwards, maybe 70% into the book, then we get chapters long POVs from the murderer and leading to when this person kills Marin. And it's like, if you had put it before we found out, it would have made it even cooler and like more interesting for the reader to like pick out the red flags and the mixed messages that he got from her in order for you to be like, oh, now it makes sense. But instead you put the revelation first and then the lead up second. So now the lead up just seems unimportant and dumb. I finished that damn book out of spite. I hate horns and honestly, I feel betrayed because I watched the movie, I loved the movie, and then the book was so ridiculous. We now have two checked off on the bingo board. And I have started two more books. Um, one of them being Shula Roon, The Girl from the Other Side, volume three. I absolutely recommend this manga series. It's one of my favorites, if not my absolute favorite. And I've been looking for this volume everywhere. So we're already here. Um, Teacher and Shiva deserve the world, and I want them to be together forever. Um, apparently, Shiva's aunt has come to get her, and is like, oh yes, you mustn't trust outsiders. Teacher, he's bad, and you need to, and you need to get it drilled into your head that Teacher was trying to kidnap you. I'm the good one here. I'm sorry, Auntie seems fake. And then the second one that I'm reading is True History of the Kelly Gang by Peter Carey. Um, this I'm reading for prompt number 31 
which is your first Halloween, which is to read um, something from the year you were born. This is about Ned Kelly and it takes the parcels that he wrote and um, just basically talks about his life up until he was hanged or something like that. And it's pretty interesting so far. Um, it, <laughs> it says uh, on errant scraps of paper in semi-illiterate but magically descriptive prose as he flees from the police. Um, when they say semi-literate prose, they mean semi-literate prose, okay? But other than that, this is pretty good so far. Then again, I'm only on page 14, so take from that what you will. But yeah, these are what I'm working on right now. I will update you guys if anything occurs. Okay, so it is officially the end of the readathon. Today is Halloween. Keep your black cats inside because people are superstitious and or just mean. <laughs> so, um, update. I finished the readathon on a very good note, I will say. Um, one, because I finished two books in one night. Uh, I finished True History of the Kelly Gang by Peter Carey. I gave this three stars. It was good, but because everything was surface level, not surface level as in sour candy, but I mean surface level because, you know, he didn't really delve into anything that much. Um, anything that was like overly emotional, like the deaths of his two sisters, um, you know, we kind of just blew it, it seemed as if we only just blew past it. Honestly, the entire time I was reading this, I was just picturing Ned Kelly as Heath Ledger. So, <laughs> that's that. And then, um, the last book that I read, which was the last book that I finished for the readathon, and that is Shula Rune, The Girl from the Other Side, Volume 3. Listen, the headlock that this series has on me is probably shifting into the unhealthy zone. However, <laughs> I love this series, okay? It took me on such an emotional roller coaster. This is honestly so much fun to read. I gave it five stars. So that was for the prompt of Trick or Treaters, I think, which was to read like a comic book or a graphic novel, which I finished. So with that being said, this is my completed bingo board. Um, I only got one bingo and honestly I'm I'm proud of what I was able to get read so like I said at the beginning of the vlog it's time to tally up the points so tallied all up that is 190 points plus the fact that I reviewed all of them which is 10 points per review so that would give me 120 Plus the fact that I completed a five in a row, which gives me 10, which is 205 plus 120, which all in all gives me 325 points for this readathon. I think I did very, very well. Not to mention this whole time I was fighting off disappointing books. I finished the readathon and I am happy that I can now upload this vlog. It may be a little bit late and for that I do apologize. So you guys, that was my trick or treat a reading vlog. I hope you guys enjoyed, maybe made it to the end of this very long video. And again, for that, I apologize. But um, I hope you guys have a safe Halloween, um, a good reading month because we are starting November tomorrow as of this day that I'm filming and look forward to a lot more videos from me because, you know, um, I have a lot in storage that I need to get out there because, you know, just a lot of stuff. Life, as we all love and know it, right? So you guys, with that being said, I hope you guys have a good rest of your day and then I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.